Good morning guys, welcome to today's lesson. We'll be looking at angles at a point and vertically opposite angles. Angles at a point is uh, is a, certainly a, a, a very important type of angle that we're looking at. We've been looking at uh, this particular question, I guess, where we've got, I'm gonna put a right angle inside there, I'm gonna put that as X, I'm gonna put this angle as, let's say, um, 140 degrees. Now, what do we know about angles at a point? Well, first of all, angles at a point, the reason it is angles at a point, you can see all these lines here come together in one point. Okay, come together in one point. So you can sort of see there in the green coming through, um, it's all coming to a point. Now, the other thing is the angles at a point, the actual angle that we're looking at for angles at a point is the angle bound by the th these three lines. So you can see it's this sort of angle there. Now that kind of looks like a circle, a very odd looking circle I, I admit, but uh, it certainly looks like a circle. And you probably remember that a circle has a, an angle sum of 360 degrees. And the good thing is that's exactly the same for angles at a point. So in this particular case, I will start off, and this is very important right in your first line of working, X plus 140, plus 90 degrees, because remember a right angle, that little square there means a right angle is 90 degrees, is equal to 360 degrees. My reasoning, which is just as important, is angles at a point equal 360 degrees. Often if you just write angles at a point, they'd be satisfactory. Okay, and then it's up to you and if you just simply find the answer or if you do some extra working out. If you do some extra working out, I'd put X plus, well, 140 plus 90 is going to be 230 equals 360. So we've kind of formed that equation. We're going to then subtract the 230 to get X is equal to 130 degrees. So now I've managed to find myself the value of X that the question asked. So again, the angle's at a point and often they can be um, misconstrued, I guess, or mixed up with questions sort of like this, where some people think, hold on, there are some two kind of straight lines there. It could possibly be our second angle angles at a point, um, so vertically opposite angles, which we'll look at very shortly, and you might recognize why that gets mixed up. But I'm gonna call these dog-legged lines. So dog-leg lines, legged lines. What I mean by that is they're not just straight lines like that. You can see they're kind of like a dog leg where there's a bit of a bend in that particular line. But when we go through the next angle, you'll see what I mean by that. Okay, so let's have a look at a vertically opposite angle. I'm now going to use two directly straight lines. Okay, so they're nearly straight. Okay, so two straight lines. And the question might have X over here and 50 degrees over here. Now this is one where you simply, uh, you, you need to remember the ruling, but also you can get around it um, by using straight angles, which I'll show you in a moment. So this is a vertically opposite angle, and the good thing about vertically opposite angles, you might look at that angle there and that angle there, and you say, oh, hold on, they look pretty much the same size. They look equal, don't they? And that's actually um, very true. We can simply write in this particular instance, X is equal to 50 degrees, and your reasoning would be your vertically opposite angles are equal. And that's your ruling, and guess what? That's job done. You know, that's simply your answer. Likewise, you know, these two angles here would also be equal. I did mention that there's another way to do this question. You could look at having um, straight line angles. What you might recognize is if I look at this angle here, that's actually angles on a straight line. So if that's X and this is another angle here, okay, then you know they're up to give 180 degrees, but thinking, well, hold on, I don't know what X is, so how does that help me? Well, looks, look, let's look around a second time. Let's look from where I'm doing the orange one to these two, because that line there is still a straight line. Now, because that's 50 degrees, this must be 130 degrees because they're, it's a straight angle, 130 plus 50 is 180 degrees. But that means now, 
that these two angles that we looked at originally on the straight line must also add up to 180 degrees, which must mean that that's equal to 50 degrees too. So if all else fails, I'll say all else fails, use straight angle. But to be honest, guys, vertically opposite angles, you should be able to remember it is a very typical type of angle, and we can use it in lots of different ways, and you may, um, may use it also when we get to the alternate angles in parallel lines corresponding to interior, because certainly when you have parallel lines, if you think, remember what parallel lines are? Oop, that's not very parallel, is it? I'm gonna redraw that again. Let me just rub that, that one out. Parallel lines, you might remember, are lines that never meet, okay, like this. And they have little arrows on there. And when you put a line straight down there, you create lots of um, vertically opposite angles. For example, there's a vertically opposite angle there and there. There's one there and there's one. Actually, I'll do one there and there. If I look, use a little X, there's going to be one there and there and there and there. You may wonder why I just dropped that little dot before and I put those dots in the same order. When you get to your angles in parallel lines, um, you'll notice that we call these two angles here vert uh, alternate angles, okay, which are equal. So I need to make sure that the dots were in the right places, but that's for another lesson. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of questions. Um, we're going to certainly go to some more challenging questions now. So on EG1, I'm going to give you a question here. This is going to be x plus 10. That's going to be um, 160 degrees. I'm going to give you x. I'm going to give you 3x. Okay, so this is a typical challenging question. So what do you notice? What type of question is this? Well, hopefully you recognize that the lines all go to a point. So this should think about it being an angles at a point question, which we will use for our reasoning in, in a little while. So what do we know about angles at a point? Well, hopefully you remember that angles at a point, we've, we just went through it about three or four minutes ago, that all the angles add together to get 360 degrees. So what that means is this. I'm going to start with 160. You can start with any of the angles, but I'm now going to add each of the other angles together. Now, a lot of them look very challenging, but I've simply said 160 plus x plus 3x plus x plus 10. We know that they all plus together to give 360 degrees. Remembering that you must put your reasoning there, angles at a point, which is probably enough, but I'm going to also put equals 360 degrees just to be absolutely perfect there. Okay, so what I've done, I've managed to form an equation, a little bit more challenging of an equation than previously, but certainly an equation nonetheless. Now let's add or subtract. I've got like terms. I've got 160, I've got plus 10. Now remember, I can't add x and 160 together. I can't do that. Or 3 and 160. Remember, we have to add or subtract like terms. So 160 plus 10 is 170. What other like terms do we have there? Well, we have this plus x, plus 3x, plus x. Well, we've got 1x plus 3x, which is 4x, plus another x, which makes it 5x. I'm going to put that there, plus 5x equals 360 degrees. And now I've got a fairly nice equation, which we've been able to solve before. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the 170, because I want to have x by itself. So I end up with 5x is, well, 360 minus 170. Okay, that's going to be 190. And now I'm going to divide that by 5, because the opposite of times 5 is divide by 5. And I'm going to come up with, um, let's have a look, 5 goes into 19 uh, three times with four left over, five goes in 48 times. So I get x is equal to 38, which is a, an unusual answer you might think, but certainly it means that, that the uh, angle here, it must be 38 degrees, I'll put that in yellow, 38 degrees, that's three times 38, 
that's 38 plus 10, which would be 48, etc. And that will go up your with your answer. Okay, so that's going to be your challenging angles at a point. Let's have a look at, oh, sorry about that. Let's have a look at um, a challenging vertically opposite angle question. Um, okay, let's have a quick look. I'm going to draw a line there. I'm going to draw a line there. And I might even draw a line there. I'm going to put that at a right angle. I'm going to put 4x. I'm going to put, let's say, um, 80 degrees inside here. Okay. So this question, it does look challenging um, and it can get a little bit confusing. I see this right angle here and, and there's other ways you could do this. And I guess there's a reason why I've given you the right angle there. The main easy way of doing this, because we're doing vertically opposite angles, is we're looking at these two directly straight lines here. Now, because these are two direct straight lines, I automatically know that this angle here and this angle here equals each other because they're vertical opposite angles. So I'm going to write down here 4x is equal to 80 degrees, brackets, my reason, my vertically opposite angles. Now, you probably get away with writing that, but I'm going to put R equal. Okay, so I've now formed myself an equation which we need to solve. Well, how do I get rid of the times by 4? We need to divide by 4. So x will equal 20, 20 or 20 degrees, and I am solved. That's it. Well, you might think, well, why are they giving me that 9 degrees? I haven't used that. Do I need to use it? Well, you can see absolutely not. We don't need to use it. They can give it that angle there for two reasons. The first, to confuse you. Okay, that's the first reason they can give it to you. The second reason is, is that if I look at this line that we looked at before, we know it's a straight line. If I couldn't remember vertically opposite angles, what we could actually use is the straight angle here. Okay, and in that case go 80 plus 90 plus, let's say, y is equal to 180 degrees. Use that for a straight angle. Figure out what y is going to be, which in that case, that would probably be 10 degrees. And then I could use, I might do this in a different color again. Let's choose yellow. These three angles together could be a right out, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, straight angle. So I could put 90 plus 10 plus 4x equals 180 degrees and write that as a straight angle again. And then I'm going to solve that and try to find out what it's going to be. Take the 100 away. I'm going to get 4x equals 80, x equals 20. So I could actually do that via straight angles once again, but you can see how much extra working there is involved in having to do a straight angle as opposed to that lovely little vertically opposite angles. Okay, so look, I hope you found this useful. You need to remember the rulings vertically opposite angles and angles at a point. Each time that you write that first statement down, you must back it up with one of those two reasons. Have a fantastic day. Any problems, let me know.